action. Independence Day, everyone. We got a real treat for you. We got something I've been wanting to do for a really long time. Is that we have a piece of styrofoam board right here, a super glue gun right over here, and fireworks. Not the good kind, the the crappy we live in the high mountains of Colorado kind. But we're still going to take these guys. Uh, hot glue them to this board right here and light them all off on fire and see what's going to happen with them. Well, we're about to open up the package right here. With we got some Mr. Sparkle right here, Mr. Crackle, some gold dust, some sunshines, red hots like the candy, and the big old color shock. There we are. So we're gonna cut this right on open here. To work here. Uh, now, one of my fondest uh, Fourth of July memories happened about 29 years ago, almost the date of this four, past Fourth of July. Let's glue this on like so, and we're going to just stamp it down. My first tower in Fireworks City. Now, about 30 years ago, I had uh, acquired a bunch of uh, fireworks through my paperwork gig. I delivered newspapers, and they'd pay me for it. And so, at the ripe age of 12, I promptly took all my paper route money for the month of June, invested them wisely into fireworks. And there it was on 4th of July. Yes, I think I opened this one up wrong. We just got it, so there. <laughs> And that's that's what we got going on over here. My little brother also had acquired fireworks, and my father and I and my brother were off all lighting fireworks in the street. My father would say, "Light them off in the street! Light them off in the street!" And so yours truly, being law and order every time, was lighting them off in the streets. While my younger brother uh, was lighting them off haphazardly, once against the fire code. And so I was standing in the sidewalk, away from the street, when my brother launched off one of those crackle bombs that shot shit everywhere. And one of those little fireworks made it right into my back and set off the majority of my fireworks in a grand display. So much so that neighbors, the neighbor girl, even came over just to see what the hell was going on as there was cussing and cursing and spitting coming from my end because I wanted to kill my brother. And uh, so I ended up, uh, after a, a nice throwdown with him, I ended up getting uh, able to write, uh, light off the rest of his fireworks, which weren't many. And my dad decided that maybe I'd got like five dollars over his allowance or something, which is a far cry from the death that I wanted. That is my fireworks story right there. I'm glad I didn't get the death, as I once wanted. <laughs> Now I've heard there was a secret chord that David played and it pleased the Lord, but you don't. We're almost about done with uh, my little construction here. This is pretty self explanatory, gluing all these guys to the bottom of this. I'm also taking sparklers and duct taping them to the sides of my building here in Fireworks City because the entire idea is. Is that if I get enough of these lit, they'll light the other ones, and then they'll all just go off into woohoo, and you'll get, you know, all thirty dollars worth of firework experience that I have going on here today. So that's just what we're doing. So we're using all the little fireworks that I got just to make it as big and as ridiculous as possible. So it should be a grand explosion of burning and 
fireworks, sparkly. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, moms and dads, I present to you Fireworks City in all its splendid glory right here. It crackles, it's colors, it shocks, and uh, it has gold dust in it. And, you know, personalized, we even got the fire department here with some police officers. Make sure that we're all safe and doing this all legally. Uh, so, hopefully we don't catch fire to the trailer of court. That is what we're not going to do. So we will have a fire extinguisher and a bucket of water uh, for fire prevention. But also we'll have a pre-show with a tank battle, snakes, and maybe a blooming flower. But first we got to wait for the dusk. So here we are, waiting. Three days late. The sun is down, so I got my tanks out, ready to go. Uh, as we're going to start with our 4th of July celebration with the annual tank battle. Dun, dun, dun. So, here we are. You got one tank, the other tank, two lighters here. Make sure that... I know you can probably barely see me, but that doesn't matter. We got Fireworks City out here because it's dark out. I'm gonna, just going to start lighting it off. I'm going to set it on the ground. Here we go. Now I've heard two lighters. there was a secret sure. chord that David played and it pleased the Lord. But you don't really care for music, do you?
told the truth. There we are, everyone. Happy Fourth of July. I hope it was all nice and climatic for you. And uh, we're going to see you again in two weeks. Thank you so much. <coughs> well, folks, that's our show for today. Uh, happy Fourth of July once again. And don't forget to hit the like button, the subscribe button, ring my bell, hit my belly button, whatever it does. Like it, share it, and enjoy the garage door reveal. Hi y'all, Cousin Dave here, and I hope you are getting ready for a fantastic Independence holiday. Now, as far as Independence Day goes, it really ain't the 4th of July unless you have yourself a nice little barbecue. <laughs> as you know, a green trailer guy usually sets up a nice little queue with some hot dogs and hamburgers. Well, some of us can't do that. Whether you be uh, slightly limited by your budget or by a dietary restrictions, such as myself, who has unfortunately had to cut meat out unless I want to avoid a bypass surgery. <laughs> what do you do if you live off of bacon for four years? Well, I'm going to show you how to do budget barbecue on the cheap. I'm going to bring it on out here because, uh, <laughs> you know, you don't want smoke filling up the place you're sleeping, crashing, playing all your games in. So, I'm going to get me a coffee can. Now that's usually fairly simple. I mean, you can find these laying all over the trailer. People sometimes stack them up all along the side. This is pretty much free. If not, 
you can probably find it for pretty darn cheap. Now, as far as charcoal, <laughs> yeah, I try to get some real good charcoal. And uh, the nice thing is, this is another item that a lot of times people do not need anymore, and so they just simply leave it sitting by their barbecue grill or or, or by their porch or inside of a very flimsy locked shed. So, you grab yourself some uh, some charcoal, and uh, you try to get the good kind, you know, the kind that's got big old chunks, you know? I mean, this is the kind you want, you understand? That came straight out of the earth, didn't it? You can tell. So, you get your uh, charcoal all built up, and then uh, you start to get it good and saturated with any kind of flammable material you can find. Now this here, once again, Found it right next to this here charcoal. Fellow wasn't using it at all. So, now we get into the vegan portion of our presentation. It's hard to believe, but since I can't eat meat, I have had to figure out things that barbecue as good as meat. So, at a barbecue, generally you find, <laughs> sitting around on a table, lots of bread. You got buns of various kinds. And the nice thing about a bun is very filling. Bread, I mean, you know, prisoners lived off of bread and water. Now, all you have to do is feed it through the side very carefully, using your fingers as a guide. And now, look at that. You got yourself a bun on a stick. Now, next up, you got to have some veggies in your diet. And so, you pop yourself, oh, something like a carrot. Now, uh, you get yourself something to cut said carrot with, uh, you know, whatever happens to be handy. And uh, you give it a good chop, but you don't want to go too big. Well, hell, those are probably not edible now. Uh, use your other finger to hold that, because otherwise it just ends up on the ground. Now, you feed yourself a carrot. Be very careful not to stab yourself in the hand. I have done that before, and I can assure you it does not feel good. Next up, you got your other side of the bun. You can feed anything else that you may have found in a local dumpster or a trash can, or, you know, neighbor's uh, refrigerator if they're not home. And now you got yourself a vegan shish kebab. So now we got to get her lit up. Uh, nice thing is, fire starter, very easy. You just wander into your local fast food establishment, and they got a whole bunch of fire starters just sitting there for free. <laughs> It's fantastic. I use, uh, I get all my condiments that way as well. So we got it fired up, and look at that. Oh, that's gonna be a real nice grill. Now we just set our shish kebab right on top. If you can, you try to go with, uh, you know, something that uh, it, uh, catch too good, too bad. Uh, you know, the challenge is this sucker spins, and uh, yeah, there we go. Look at that. We're already getting a toasted bun. There's nothing like a toasted bun to make you forget that you can't eat meat anymore. Isn't that beautiful? It's not really going real good. Let me see if I can get her going a little bit more. There we go. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Oh, crap! Oh, God, my pants! My pants on fire! Oh, oh, God! God. Oh, shit, oh, shit, oh, shit! Oh, shit. Bad, bad idea, bad idea! Stop, drop, and roll! Stop, drop, and roll! Okay, okay! <laughs>